Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, we're continuing on in our project here, making a new spring hanger for the Vulcan locomotive out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. This is the part that broke uh, on the locomotive uh, a week or so ago when they were out running it, and we are in the process of manufacturing a new one. So this is part two in the series. If you haven't already, go back and watch part one where we basically rough milled out the shape uh, that we're going to be making this out of. And we're to the point now where we need to put the, the holes in here, the slots in here, uh, that will be actually holding the springs in place. And to do that, we're going to be doing some more work over here on the milling machine. And this has been a milling machine project all the way. So let's get set up and get going. So the first slot we're going to be cutting is this large slot down here in the bottom. And I've already got the measurements and so forth on there. And I've actually got kind of that rectangular area there uh, just kind of scribed out on here uh, for me to kind of have a guidance to go by. And we're going to start, because this is not a round, this is kind of a flat bottom, we're going to drill four quarter inch holes kind of in the corners that will become our radiuses. I think I'm going to then come in here with a big drill bit and try to drill out as much as that material as I can. And then of course we'll be coming in here with an end mill to kind of go around the outside and clean that thing up so that we have a nice surface to get into. So I uh, need to have some spacers up underneath this part in the vise just so that my drill bits and milling machine or milling cutters have a place to go. Yeah, so we, I think those will all clear right there and we'll clamp her down. I've got my coordinates I need to drive to to drill these holes uh, kind of sketched out here. I did the math and everything ahead of time. I won't go over that, but what I need to do is go ahead and do some edge finding here and basically find my zero, zero on here. Actually, we're going to make this bottom edge a zero, and then I'm going to make this center of this part a zero. Uh, just to, It's symmetrical. That's just going to be a little bit easier for me to work off of. So let's... Uh, Get our mill going. I got my edge finder in here. Start by finding this edge on the bottom. And we'll come in until that scoops over. Right there, I'm on a zero. Out my DRO. And then of course we need to take into account the diameter of that part, which is a half inch, half of that's a quarter inch, 0.250. I'll dial that in on my digital readout, uh, which you're not seeing right now. And I'm gonna zero that. So now I have basically my bottom zero is right on the center of that part. Next we'll come over here, we'll find the center in this direction. And the way I'll do that is we will come down, find this edge. I'll zero that. We'll come to the other side. Find this edge. And then over here on the DRO, I'm just going to use my half function. So we'll select half. I want to use my Y axis. It's going to give me that number there, 1.6006, which is halfway in between those two points. And when I move to that zero, that is the center of the part. And that's four tenths out. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that, but that's basically zero there. So I now have a zero on the bottom edge and in the center of the part. Four holes here, half inch diameter, quarter inch radius in the corners. So uh, I've got my first coordinate set up here. I'm just gonna come in here and uh, spot a little centered hole right there for my drill bit to get started on. And we'll uh, put our drill bit in and drill that hole. I'm 
and got my cool mist to help uh, keep this cool and lubricated. So let's uh, get these four corners drilled out. Navigates our second coordinate. And go another hole right there. Bring you guys in here so you can kind of see what we're doing. I drilled a series of holes in here and right now what I'm doing is I'm trying to take out as much of the middle as I can and I'm doing this by using just a big one inch end mill and we're just kind of going down through it uh, boring but you basically using it as a boring bar and I'm using my automatic feed going down and we're just nibbling this middle section out. There's a lot of, a lot of metal in there that needs to uh, come out of this piece and we're just taking it out a little bit at a time so i bring it down until it just touches i engage my auto feed and we just let it uh bore down through there all right we're through Continue on until we get it done. We've got our center pretty well taken out now. Now what I want to do is kind of go around the edge and clean the edge up. And I've, again, I got my coordinates in my DR I'm going to go to. So we're going to start by just uh, seeing if we can go down all the way right here. I think we can. That should make a little light cut right through there. But I can see this by hand, it's not taking much. Alright, we are below the bottom now. And I'm just going to take this along. And hopefully clean that side edge up. I'm just going to do this by hand. And I got my coordinates, I know where I need to stop on the other end. Got this side done. We got one more slot to cut in here and I'm going to just start with a start and stop hole. Uh, this is a little over five eighths wide. So my plan is here is that I'm just going to get a two holes in here. We'll probably get a five eighths end mill and just go back and forth a couple of depths and, uh, and nibble that out. So let's start with our holes. I'm going to get an end mill now and we'll go ahead and cut that out. Let's see if we can roll down through here.
All right, we got our slot in there, but we got to widen this out. I just did the math. Uh, I need to move my cutter 65 thousandths past center on either direction. And so we're just going to kind of work our way around it, kind of like we did that last one, and nibble her out here. So let me start by getting up at the very top. And then we're going to come over 65 thousandths. Come down that other side now. Well guys, we are getting into the short rows here. The only thing left to do on this is to just radius these ends out. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can come up with some way to kind of lop that majority of that off. And quite honestly, I'm just gonna hit it on the grinder and round it over. Uh, it's nothing critical on those radiuses, just to give it some relief. Uh, but everything else is looking good. The two parts match pretty well. And uh, they're gonna work great, so. Let me uh, see what I can come up with to get those corners lopped off and uh, then we'll get that radius put on there. So I'm just going to use a uh, cutoff wheel here on the grinder and lop most of that off. At least that's the game plan. Let's see how it goes. That worked pretty good. Let's flop it around here and get the other one now. All right, last step is we're gonna grind these out on the big Baldor grinder. Mission accomplished, guys. We are through with this project. We're gonna call that done. So I'm gonna get this out to the museum. They're gonna to try to get it back on the train tomorrow and they gotta run the train this coming Saturday. And they were wanting to run it on Friday too, briefly. They gotta, they wanna move some equipment around 
uh, getting ready for a big day out there Saturday. So anyway, we're all ready to go. I did go ahead and make another little key. I did this off camera. I just took a three quarter inch end mill and cut a slot in there and just ground a radius on there. So basically the way this works is, is this bottom hook, there, or bottom slot, there's a hook that comes in here and catches on there. And it's actually goes across, it pivots on the front of the train and it hooks into both of these so they can swivel up and down like this right here on one side or the other. Uh, then the, the, the top one here, uh, the spring, basically there's a slot in those and the, the springs slide over the top of this. And when you jack the train up and get the tension off of it, basically the bottom of the spring will be down below this notch. You slide this key in, and then when you take the jack out from under the train, um, there's just the pressure that's gonna hold that, and then this key's gonna fit on the top of that spring and basically hold it in there. So that's kind of the way it works. It's a fun little project. Uh, a lot of metal got removed in this process. This is a time consuming job. I remember it took a long time and I did the last one. I think I probably got about 12 or 14 hours in this thing. I know the videos are relatively short. I did not bore you with all the just metal removal, but just starting with an oversized piece of stock and then just carving this thing out. I got a huge mess of chips over there. I got to get cleaned up off the floor because uh, I mean, there's probably a pound or two of chips over there. A uh, lot, of, lot of material had to be removed to get this job done, but it wasn't an overly complicated project, just time consuming. Uh, but we got it done and we'll get it out to the museum for those guys. Always fun to get to make parts for the steam locomotive. Uh, so both of these parts on here, they're, they're, there's, there's four hangers total, spring hangers on the locomotive, but there are only two of this style. Uh, the other six are all of a different style totally. They attach differently to the frame and everything. Uh, someone made the comments, well, you might as well just go ahead and make a couple of extras while you're doing it because at the rate it's going, the other ones are going to break too. Well, we've got both of the originals have been replaced now. so. If uh, mine lasts just half as long as the originals, the original ones lasted 101 years, so mine lasts uh, 50 and a half years, I'll be happy. And uh, I probably won't be the next guy having to do this job. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. As always, uh, you know, leave me some comments, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot.